telling me to return ticket where you're going. This is a one-way journey. Straight down! Video game entertainment delivered piping hot into the comfort of your own living room in 30 minutes or less, or you get a pound off. Tonight's toppings include the first ever showing of Donkey Kong Country, and we're going to build up to this climax with our first challenge. So it's over to Games Master. It gives me enormous pleasure to get the barrel rolling on this Donkey Kong special. The challenge on the arcade game that started it all, Donkey Kong. This ancient platformer has stood the test of time and should still provide a tough test for our game players. Their aim will be to finish level one in the fastest time, avoiding the barrels being hurled by the miserably perturbed Donkey Kong. First up on the Donkey Kong special, we have Cheetan, Simon Smith, and Alistair Gray. Uh, what's your favourite film? Uh, True Lies. True Lies. Are you a big Arnie fan then? Yeah. Um, right, uh, Simon, which video game character then do you fancy the most? Probably Cammy. Super Street Fighter 2. What appeals to you about Cammy? Don't know. Just think she's great. Yeah, and she's got a sparkling personality yeah. as well. Um, finally, Alistair, when you're not playing video games, what do you like to do? I like to go rollerblading. What do you like about rollerblading? I know, it's fast. Well, you've uh, certainly convinced me that I think I'm going to go out and uh, get one right away. So while I leaf through the yellow pages, we'll take a look at the news. November the 25th, we'll see the launch of a new Sega add-on that takes the normal Mega Drive and says, Hello, sir, would you like to be 40 times more powerful? We forced two kids at gunpoint to go down to Sega's HQ this week for an exclusive preview. Once you've plugged in the 32X, the Mega Drive gets a little bit exciting and begins playing a new format of games with graphics and noises that are simply spanky. Want to see more? Containing chips designed to produce fast 3D graphics, it's no surprise that the first three 32X games are first-person perspective action games. First up, Star Wars. This polygon shifter has been making arcade players regularly change pants since it came out a few months ago. But did our punters poo theirs? Well, it's got all four missions from the arcade game. The graphic looks pretty much the same, I think. I haven't played the arcade game, but this is good. It's fast and really smooth. Next up, we said if the kids didn't play Virtua Racing Deluxe, an enhanced version of the arcade game, we'd beat them with a stick. This is close to the original arcade game. The graphics are bigger and now fill the screen. It's got two new tracks and two new cars to play with. Finally, they tried their luck at the Blood and Gore Fest. Doom. You could only play this uh, on a PC before, but it looks great on this. It really looks good. The 32X can handle Doom. Wicked gun as well. Sega expect to have 40 games out by next Easter, costing about 50 quid each, but the system itself costs 170 quid without any games, and you need a Mega Drive as well, so if you're poor, you might be stuffed. Right, we're just about to kick off the Games Master Donkey Kong special with the original Donkey Kong arcade game. Helping me out is Games Master's very own Andy Hutchison. Andy, I bet you know some crazy facts about this old classic. Well, funnily enough, Dominic, this game is so old that the Queen Mother was the first person ever to get her name on the high school table. <laughs> God bless her. Okay, each contestant uh, has to try and get to the top of the first screen. Whoever does it in the quickest time will win the golden joystick. Chi is going first. Best of luck, Chi. Your time starts now. And uh, F goes Chi. Now, Hutch, if you were playing this, what would you, what would you be thinking now? What well, I'd be trying to get that mallet for a start. Get the mallet and you can bash those barrels. He hasn't, she hasn't gone for the mallet, though. Maybe as you try it, is that, would it waste a bit of time maybe getting the mallet? Well, possibly, yeah, I mean, yeah. waggle it about a bit. Okay, he's nearly at 
the top now. This bit's going to get tricky though now. That's right. Just that got to get this final ladder and he's got to get up to Daisy there. Gotta Just watch one out more for thing, he's going to go up this ladder. And he does it! 29 seconds! Chukan does it! So let's make way for Simon! So, best of luck, Simon. Your time starts now. Yeah. And off to Simon. Now, cheese down 29 seconds. A good time, man. Do you think you could do it quicker than that? I think it can definitely be beaten because Chi messed around quite a bit on that middle level there. Yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> oh. Just a he wasn't having any of this rolling stuff then. That's right. right. You've got to watch out for these special barrels that are coming out. It's oh, dear, it's getting shading. a bit congested here now. This is looking a bit tricky. 22 oh. seconds. Simon doesn't get to the top, can he make way for Alistair? So, 29 seconds to beat. Best of luck, Alistair. Your time starts now. Okay, Alistair's Alistair. We've still got a time of 29 seconds, folks. Can you see Alistair doing it? If he doesn't mess around, then I think he can dive Mario right up to the top there. It should be a problem. Very, very unlucky. There was just one second in there. Where do you think you lost that vital second? I think it was near the top. I kind of missed the ladder. You yeah. dallied about a bit, didn't you? Yeah. And it proved to be crucial. Um, Simon, uh, you didn't really have time to dally. No. Did you? And now, uh, where did you go wrong? As again, as I was going up, look, I got hit by a barrel that was coming down. Alistair, one second in it, it was uh, very close there. Were you confident you could do it all the time? Yeah, I was. Yep, and you're very quite happy about winning the golden joystick? Mm, yeah. Yep. Can we get that smile in camera three? <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so round of applause for our golden joystick winner, Alistair. <laughs> Hitherto unknown peaks of personal pride, we come crashing back down to Terra Firma with today's reviews. First up, what's the best way to shamelessly rip off Mario Kart? Make it even better and call it Street Racer. Street Racer came as a bit of a surprise. It's um, quite simply the best racing game on the Super NES, if not any machine. While you're racing, you can pick up power ups, you can punch other racers off the track. It's fantastic. As well as allowing you to have four players on screen at once, there are also a fantastic array of bonus games. There's a football game where you have to knock a ball around from within your car against all the other players, which is fab. And there's also a kind of sumo wrestling game where you all have to knock each other out of a ring. Each character in the game has his own set of tracks. There's Hodger, little Turkish geezer with a beard, and then there's Biff, who's a bit of a bully. Um, each individual track is very, very different from the last one and makes for very competitive racing. Next up, take a cute cartoon license and flog it till it lies coughing and spluttering. Is Acme All Stars a game too far? Acme All Stars is like two sports games rolled into one. You've got a straight basketball game and a straight football game. Um, they feature all the characters from the Tiny Toon series. And as such, it's a bit young for most people, I think. It's um, quite easy. The football side of Acme All Stars is not exactly up to FIFA or sensible soccer standards, but it is a very funny game in its own right. If you've got other, uh, some friends that want to join in, it's even funnier. Hampton Pig is top winger extraordinaire. Both the games are rather limited, and uh, I think even younger kids are going to get bored of this pretty quickly. If you want a football game, get a proper football game, and likewise for basketball. Finally, Indy has a moustache, bizarrely, but is his SNES outing a highlight or a hairy moment? The man with the hat is back. Indiana Jones comes to the Super NES. Very much like Castlevania, there are plenty of platforms and there's plenty of whipping action. The Indy character is beautifully animated. He performs all your typical Indy functions. He can whip, he can jump, he can shoot people. And um, what you have here is a platform game with lots of levels, lots of nice graphics, and an uh, Indy. Basically, it does the same for the Indiana Jones films as the Star Wars game did for Star Wars. If you like the Indiana Jones films and you're a big Star Wars games fan, then this could be for you. Now 
it's time for the second semi-final in our Games Master FIFA 95 special. In our last show, Casey Keller edged out Andy Cole 1-0 to claim the first final berth. To see who will be joining him, please welcome tonight's special guests, Andy Townsend and Vinnie Jones. <laughs> You've been on the show before, we know you're good at these games. You must be the favourite tonight, yeah? Well, I've had about 10 minutes practice and Andy ain't had none, so it should be yeah. interesting. But you always say you've only had a little bit of practice every time you come, but you always do well, no. And I have to say, though, Vinny, I'm a bit concerned, because I was reading in the papers the other day that you're getting a bit soft. Is this true? Well, it might be married life. We'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andy, you might have an advantage then now if, if Vinny's mellowing. Definitely. I mean, I've... Uh... I've had a mess around at home on uh, my son's computer, but not this game, I'm afraid. So. Okay, if you want to see if Vinnie Jones can ruffle Andy Townsend's here tonight, join us after the break. Andy Townsend and Vinnie Jones are about to play the second semi-final in the Games Master FIFA 95 special, holding my magic sponge is Simon Byron from the one. Simon, who do you think's got the edge tonight? Oh, it's definitely Vinny. Uh, he's already proved his games, games playing skills on their previous series. Um, he's playing as Wimbledon. They've got better goalies and, funnily enough, better passing. So, uh, well, no game can be 100% realistic. <laughs> True enough. Um, OK, best of luck to Andy and Vinny. Let's go to kick-off. To the second half we go. Vinny now playing from left to right in the play. Andy from right to left in the rear. Almost, almost the same opening, straight off. Going for Wimbledon. Oh, he tried to get on the near post there, didn't quite work. Taking his time here. Picks it up wide. That was a nice one. On. We should really be passing it around now. That's a knock it straight back in. Okay, number 11. He's not going to be happy if he loses. And the thing is, he's not even got close to goal, but could this be the one attack? But there's no one to look us up for that. And it's kicks it out. Right, head. And they've got the left flank, and it's into the middle of the middle. Oh, and there's Dino. But he kicks it the moon in particular. Wow. Well, at the end of the time, I think both, both sets of strikers should be short at the end of this game. <laughs> and that's it, it's all. Challenge! Well done, Vinny. Well done, Andy. Thank you. Now, Vinny, what happened? You were the pre-match favourite, then it all seemed to go to pieces. Yeah, might, might have been a little bit overconfident this time. I think so. You came out and there's a, a lot of long balls pumped needlessly forward. 
Yeah, I forgot that we'd sold fash. <laughs> You're putting it forward to fash. <laughs> Now, Andy, what did you say to the boys at half-time? Because uh, the second half they were storming. Yeah, well, I just said, keep it going, lads, you know, uh, we're looking good. Yeah. Play a uh, natural game. That's it, keep going, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it was a good win in the end. And you came up trumps at the end, which means that we're going to see you in the next show for the grand final. And uh, we have to say goodbye to Vinny at this point, but let's have a round of applause for both our guests today. Vinny Trump! <laughs> For the man to give more advice with less weight than Claire Rayner in the consultation zone. Hello. It's time for me to suffer another bunch of lost souls with terrible afflictions to enter my consultation zone. Unfortunately, I can only solve their games playing deficiencies. But who's first? Games Master. I can't get through the first level of Hulk on the Mega Drive. What am I doing wrong? You need to put on a bit of weight straight away. On level one, walk to the first sewer and drop down. Jump up and walk to the left. And I like it there. You'll find yourself in a secret room containing a health power. Collect this, you'll find yourself a dazzling shade of green that becomes your improving statue. <laughs> better now? Much better, thanks. Who's next for some relief? Games Master, at the start of level 4 on the Lock and Tumble for the Omega, there's a platform with lots of power-ups on it that I can't reach. Do you know how to make the stretch up so I can reach them? You'll need to have faith in me if you're going to fulfill your ultimate goal. First, make your way to the very far right of the level. Then, travel up. You will come to a point where you can see a number of coins suspended tantalizingly in the distance. You seem to reach a dead end. Now make a leap of faith toward the coins, and this my magic, a hidden platform will appear under your weary feet. Now you can make your way to the original platform, where you'll be rewarded with a host of powers. Thanks, Games Master, on that one. Who's next? Games Master, I'm not very good at theme park on the PC. Nobody ever comes to my park. Could you help me, please? Well, it's a game of swings and roundabouts, but I think I may have a little something to set your big wheel in motion. Enter this nickname, then go up to the park screen and press L and Z, Control and Z, and Shift and Z to get all the lines, drops and features respected. That should put some hot air into your balloons. Great, that's Mega Games Master. Well, I'm afraid it's time to bring another consultation session to a close. Till my next audience, ta-ta! Summer CES 1994 in some period of what actor has to dress like a monkey to announce the launch of Donkey Kong Country, Nintendo's flagship title this year, which is shock horror, a platform game. A far cry from the first Donkey Kong 15 years ago, which was a platform game, albeit the first one ever. It had four levels, sparse animation, and the characters were one-dimensional in a we could present the word type situation. However, the difference with the latest Kong incarnation is that it's very physically attractive. There's a hundred mini-adventure type levels, computer rendered characters, and animation more lifelike than anything on a British Rail buffet. Tim Stamper is not a terribly good looking bloke, but is chief designer of the game. So, how do you create backgrounds, Tim? First thing we need is uh, part of a tree. There's the fir tree scanned in, so this is now a texture in memory. For reasons of interesting this, I'll step in now and tell you that they then rotate and copy this all over the shop to get something that looks like a bush. So what do we need now, Tim? A rocky, a rocky path on a grassy backdrop. Combine those two with the trees. And you get a deep loving marriage between realistic foregrounds and silhouetted backdrops. You can get Mr and Mrs unique visual environment coming to visit a shop near you on November the 18th. Now it's time to bring Donkey Kong kicking and screaming into the 90s. Let's go over to Games Master to find out what the challenge is. Tonight's final contenders are about to strip on the banana skin and endure some serious monkey boots. Because our final challenge is on the inimitable Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. Three contestants will be aiming to prove they're the biggest swingers in town by completing the first level in the quickest possible time. It couldn't be strong. Indulging in this monkey-related mayhem, we have Tim Lockhurst, Christian Din, and Shari Fosman. Okay, now um, I bet you.
you three have had some great monkey experiences in your life. But what about this game? On a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you guys about being one of the first people in Britain to play Donkey Kong Country? Tim? A 10, definitely. Chris? 10. Sharif? 8. I knew you would just be awkward, wouldn't you? You can always tell it's a bloke in a silly hat that's going to be awkward. Okay, if you'd like to, uh, Tim, you can go first if you'd like to take your place on the rock and Sharif and Christian just um, ape around in the background. We'll go up to the commentary position. And still helping me out in the commentary box is Andy Hutchinson because he can't bear to leave us. Andy, it's whoever can get through the level in the quickest time. There's a couple of dilemmas, though, for our contestants, Andy. Go through them. Well, that's right, because they have insurance in the way of Donkey Kong Jr., who's hiding in a barrel. Now, it takes a couple of seconds to get at Donkey Kong, so do they go for him? Do they not? Right. The other dilemma is, is it quicker to go through the bonus level when you get the rhino? These are just options they'll have to weigh up as they play. And these are just some of the questions which will be answered on tonight's final challenge, because each contestant has to get through the, quick, the level in the quickest time. Whoever does that will get the golden joystick. Tim is going first. Tim, best of luck. On your marks, get set, go! <laughs> Best of luck, Christian. On your marks, get set, go. <laughs> Best of luck, Sharif. 36 seconds to beat. On your marks, get set, go! <laughs> Lucky that you had to go first, actually, weren't you? Yeah, I didn't know whether to go through the bonus or not, and I did, and it was so. And it was, yeah, you were very unlucky. Although, uh, Christian, you were very fortunate because you, you took a bit of a risk on up the top there, but it, but it paid off. Yeah, because I saw him go on the bonus, he was slower, so I took the top one. And then we came to you, Sharif, and knowing that the bottom bonus level bit was slower, you still opted to choose it. Uh, any reason why? It wouldn't jump. Sorry, it wouldn't, wouldn't jump. jump. You're trying to blame our, our controllers now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we believe you, uh, Sharif. Well, uh, Christian is the winner of the Games Master Gordon Joystick. <laughs> finished here for today. I'm off to propose that Scavengers gets another series. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.